welcome to beautiful Bush Stadium for this 1998 matchup between the San Francisco Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals. Now for the Giants starting lineup. Darrell Hamilton, pretty good leadoff hitter. Bill Miller was the hero two nights ago, the young man from DeSmet. He'll be at third base, and you see the rest. Bonds, Kent, and Snow in the middle. Sean Estes will pitch to Brian Johnson today. And defensively, the Cardinals with Willie McGee in left, Ray Langford in center field, Ron Gant in right field, Mabry Clayton to Shields and McGuire. Tom Pagnazzi is your catcher. We're going to flip that back around. Gant will actually be in his customary left field position, and McGee in right behind Mark Pitkaisic. He is 2 and 1 as a starter. ERA up a bit, and Ozzy, if he gets that sinker working, Cardinals will be in good shape. Watch for a lot of ground ball outs. Yeah, this is his uh, fourth start of the 98 campaign, his 34th of his career. And uh, he had career strikeout high on uh, August 19th, I believe, of 1995 against this same Giants team. So, get up. This copyrighted yeah, the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without Ozzie's consent. <laughs> and uh, the Cardinals have something to say about it, too. Bright day here at Bush Stadium. Again, we hope the thunderstorms stay away. There is a threat of weather in the area. We've seen that over the weekend as Daryl Hamilton steps in to face Mark Pitkaisic. Hope you're having a splendid Memorial Day with family and friends. And the first pitch of the game called strike. We're underway right on time. 110 at Bush Stadium. Tex, they call it. Gets ahead. 0 and 2. And with the Kaisik, control is everything. Not an overpowering pitcher. He likes to throw the ball belt down in the strike zone and get the sinker working. Ground ball, one hop. The shield should be easy. One away. It's a good start to the day. Good start to a splendid Memorial Day. Huh, Ozzy? We've got a big crowd at Bush Stadium. A lot of folks wearing red T-shirt day here. Langford's name on the back of many of them. Well, it's a uh, Langford kind of day, I guess. <laughs> we hope it was last night. This is Bill Miller slashing Mabry in on the grass at third. Gone. Well, Rich, you hope to see a lot of that today with um, Mark McIsaac on the mound throwing sinker balls. Probably see a lot of ground balls. We see a lot of ground balls. It means Mark's sinker is working. And what a wild couple of games we've had in this series. Things look so good on Friday night. A great performance by Kent Merker. And then into the ninth inning. Bill Miller hits that two run home run. I know a lot of folks in St. Louis root for Miller, but uh, I wasn't rooting for him then. No. <laughs> you know, uh, the thing that get lost was the fact that Kent Merker finally threw the ball the way that uh, everybody's expected him to throw the ball. And uh, as we see the switch here, the shift George Clayton throws out Barry Bonds. Shift was on. Clayton left side of the bag gets Bonds. One, two, three for the Cardinals, and it's their turn to hit. You're watching Mark McGuire and the St. Louis Cardinals battling the San Francisco Giants from May of 1998 on ESPN Classic. Giants go one, two, three in their half of the first. Cardinals turn coming up. Cardinals last night spotted the Giants three runs and then scored four times. A lot of runs early. As we take a look at our Southwest Airlines lineup, Gant to Shields McGuire. Langford McGee playing in right field today. Pagnazzi, Mabry, Clayton in the pitcher. Mark Pitkaisic. Here's how the Giants set up defensively. That's a good defensive outfield, especially Barry Bonds in left. You hear so much about his hitting. I don't know that there's ever been a left fielder that good. And they'll play behind Sean Estes. He was a remarkable pitcher last year, and this year off to a slow start at 3-5. and five. But Ozzie, he's overpowering, and will give the Cardinals fits. Oh, he's very... Uh... If he's on his game, as uh, he struggled a little bit this year, but uh, this guy's capable of, of shutting anybody down when he's, when he's on. That Dusty Baker does some job, doesn't he? Huh? Because he's a good manager, and I think that um, you know having played uh, gives him an, an edge on being able to deal with players, and uh, 
you, you never hear anybody say any player that has played for him have, have anything bad to say about how he relates to players, which is very important. Yeah, I heard you talk with Bob Carpenter Friday night. By the way, Bob Carpenter not with us today. He had family commitments on this Sunday. One of the makeup games that we have for you along the Cardinals network due to rainouts. As Ron Gant takes a ball high, one and one. So we wish Bob and his family well. They're at a big graduation in the Carpenter family. And he'll be back with us in San Diego next week. Fastball up and away. You move Ron Gann to the leadoff position, and he has responded. I talked to Ron the other night, Ozzy in Philadelphia. He says he really doesn't care when he hits. I know some hitters do. Well, you know, it really doesn't matter. The only time that it matters where you hit the line is the first time through. Yeah. Uh, after that, you know, uh, you just want to get your four at bats. You get four at bats, be it third, fourth, fifth, or wherever in the lineup. He can set on one here. Hitters count three and one. And he rocks one into center field. Base hit. So Gant does what the leadoff hitter should do. He gets aboard, and the Cardinals with something going here in the first. Does a good job of just taking this ball right back up the middle. Didn't try and pull it, didn't overswing. Ronnie's in a good groove right now, and if he stays right there, then uh, he can become that player that everybody uh, thought that he would when he came over here. DeShield steps in. Bill Miller even with a bag at third and creeps up on the grass as Delino takes a strike. He's been bothered with a hip injury. 336 average, a couple of home runs. So after a couple of days off, back comes Delino and they'll play him to hit the other way. With a guy like this uh, with a short step to the plate, he's a left-hander too, you know, it makes it very tough to, to steal a base off a guy like this. So uh, as a manager, probably, I would probably try and start the runner here rather than straight steal. One and two, the count. Yeah, Estes has a very good move. He is a young pitcher, was an all-star last year, and Tony LaRusso's bench is depleted. We'll tell you about that as the game goes along. He's got a lot of injuries on that bench. Not many options today. Making pitch just missed. Ryan Jordan is injured. David Howard has an injury. Gary Gaetti, of course, the eye injury. So those three you can't count on. The Shields hacks one into the seats. Down the left side. I watched Brian today, Ozzy. He had ice all over everything. They should have just put him in a big cooler. You know, we, we talk about him. He he gets more play hurt more playing baseball than he did playing football. I think he does. He's running into walls <laughs> last night. But he only knows one speed, uh, you know. Exactly that's all right. I know. That's exactly right. I think that uh, that was the thing that you worry about most with Brian uh, after having that back injury and all of the ailments he had last year was his coming back and being an all-out type of player you know he yeah. sometimes he doesn't know when to throttle back and uh, it's a good sign I guess when he starts running in the walls again and he's feeling pretty good <laughs> counts full pretty good lead by Delino see if they start the runner he holds double play ball but the shields can fly out at second safe at first on a close plus so Delino hustling all the way and a good job by Ron Gant to bother the shortstop. Well, the thing that you had here, Jeff Kent had to go too far to his left here to be able to turn it. And with the way that the shield runs, it uh, makes it very tough to be able to double him off. You can tell by the reaction who's stepping up. Mr. Mack, he made a lot of people very full the other night with a towering home run into Big Mac land. I think all of St. Louis probably converged on McDonald's and wanted a free sandwich. Even guys who weren't at the game. Base hit. A rocket pass third. So first pitch swinging. And DeShields and McGuire are aboard. Let's go back to the double play, Ozzy, and watch what happens with a potential double play. 
Well, it was one of those vicinity plays. Little neighborhood, huh? Yeah, one of those vicinity plays. And nine times out of ten, if you stay relatively close to the base, they'll give you that call. Two hits in the inning for the Cardinals against Sean Estes. Estes, 25 years old. He was picked up from Seattle for Solomon Torres back in 1995. Was an all-star, as I said, last year. Won 19 games. And gets ahead of Ray Lankford. Lankford's been doing a much better job last year and this hitting left hand. Yeah, he's worked on it quite a bit. He spends a lot of time in the cage, and um, it's starting to pay off for him. Langford takes a ball, has a nine-game hitting streak going. A lot of Cardinals with hitting streaks. DeShields has hit safely in six in a row. McGuire now, with that single, has a six-game hitting streak going. You know, ordinarily, those are tremendous numbers. But McGuire's numbers are so far out of whack, it, it pales in comparison. And you can say that about a lot of guys in the National League, Ozzy, having good years. Yeah, it, uh, it's just <laughs> his presence is so dwarfing. Um, you know, he's just taking Literally, this, yeah. Yeah, he's just kind of <laughs> taking this whole thing by storm, this whole league, really. It's been fun. Two and one, the count to Langford. And he missed with it. This is what Estes does. He led the National League in walks. You'll see him up around 100 pitches in the fifth, sixth inning. He works very deep into a great many counts. Has a good fastball and slider. Pretty good change. Music for this guy. Dusty Baker probably doesn't know it much, even though Ooh. Willie McGee is one of Dusty's favorite Willie players. McGee. Delino, Mack, and Ray Langford on base as Willie McGee steps in right hand. They'll hold McGuire at third. The Cardinals lead 1-0. And the bases remain full for Ozzie's buddy who gets the job done once again. Boy, what a treat it is to watch this professional hitter. It's like, it's like, it's like old man River. He just keeps rolling <laughs> along. Just a lousy single to right field. And nothing lousy about it. Yeah, well, you know, he just does his thing. He uses his hands very well right there. You notice he didn't stride much. He just put the put the ball in play, and that's the thing that you have to do uh, in a situation like that. Dusty Baker is out talking to his pitcher Sean Estes early in the season. Estes had some problems with his release point, and something for us to watch up here and for you folks at home. If he drops down and throws more three quarter than pushes the ball rather than getting on top of the ball, he might have some problems. Yeah, I think that you know, in watching him pitch. It's like he's rushing through it a little bit, you know, trying to hurry up and get out of there. And sometimes that gets you into a bad groove. Bagnazzi behind the plate today. He could use a few RBIs on his uh, season total. He has driven in one. He's up with the bases loaded. Off-speed pitch stays high. Always nice to get the lead. Always nice to do it in front of the home folks. And there's a bunch of them here today. 45,000 on Friday. High, deep, left field. And just foul. I bet Tom's heart was pumping a little bit as he watched that. You see right here, got a fastball. And just got out in front of it a little bit and pulled it foul. 1-1 one, one count to Pagnazzi. 1-2. and two. Good speed at second and first for the Cardinals. Any base hit, McGuire scores easily. Forty-five thousand here Friday night. Thirty-nine thousand and change here last night. Oh, 
It's been a pretty good Memorial Day weekend. Fans coming from all over to watch the Cardinals on this three-day holiday weekend. I love to see that. I like to see people from Arkansas, Tennessee, get them all up here to watch Cardinals baseball. Well, we're, we have fans all over the Midwest here, and they come from everywhere, and especially when teams winning. You know, it's, it's, a great, uh, it's a great baseball atmosphere. They're watching in KPBI. Fort Smith, Arkansas today along the Cardinals network. Outfield plays Pagnazzi to hit the ball to right. The count is full. Pagnazzi doesn't like that. Strike three, rung him up on a pitch low and in. Ed Montague behind the plate today, and Pags had words. As you see that fastball there on the inside part of the plate. Eddie thought it got part of the plate. Veteran crew, Ed Montague behind the plate, Dana DeMuth at first, Charlie Relliford at second today, Paul Schreiber at third. That one hurts. Two gone here, bottom of the first, Cardinals lead one to nothing. And John Mabry steps in. 303 average for John. He has three home runs, 18 RBIs. RBIs a sore spot with him last year. And a big swing and a miss. So he's in the hole 0 and 2. You know, Rich, in talking about uh, Mabry, you know, which is one of the most likable guys in, in mm -hmm. all of baseball, and he's one of the names that always come up when you talk about trades. And unfortunately, sometimes when you're in a situation where you're trying to uh, get yourself some more pitching or something, it, it costs a lot. And uh, his name comes up quite a bit when you talk about trade. He grounds out here. The Cardinals scored a run. So they lead one to nothing here at Bush. Action. Did you pick 61 or 62? Was it his catch? His first game, or April 8, 1974. What is the most memorable moment? Watch Game 4 of the World Series. Ever wondered what it's really like to be a soldier? What do you got? I have a sit rep from Alpha Company. Your team ready to be verified. Verified. Slow start in 1998 with only 13 hits and 53 at bats, no homers, and only three RBI in the Giants' first 12 games. It was the longest season opening stretch without a home run in his 13 year career surpassing an 11 game drought in 1987 when he played with the Pirates. Bonds and Tony Gwynn spoke to Joe Morgan about breaking out of their batting slumps in his vintage Sports Center report from 1998. I'm not used to seeing you not in the top five in the hitting. I'm not used to seeing you on the hitting charts. I mean, you're not in the top five in home runs, Are RBIs. You <laughs> no, <you're, laughs> hey, well, I had to go all the way down to doubles <laughs> to find yeah, you today, know. you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, obviously last year you had one of your best years, and you had another great year, uh, just a slow start. I'm struggling mechanically myself, mm -hmm. uh, having a lot of trouble hitting the ball the other way. Having, I, I think my eyeballs are looking in. I'm looking for the ball in, and they just painting fastballs right on the outside corner. What would be your scouting report on Barry Bonds? Just keep, don't just don't get him upset. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm in a slump, just keep leave me alone, alone. Huh? alone. Yeah, leave me alone. If I ever get upset, I think I think the Dodgers woke me up that series yeah. when Asuna upset right. me, and I wasn't swinging the bat that good. And I was I wasn't ha I wasn't having a good series coming into them, and, and they woke me up. Just don't ever work up, wake up that time. And they and that might have cost them a, a division title, right? Because when they came here, you just made them pay for that. Great baseball players study pitchers, Joe. Right. Great baseball players sit on the bench like this and they're monitoring the pitchers. They're picking right. up patterns. They're they're students of the game. Right. And, and you know, Willie always told me, you know, you to, you have to be a student of this game to right. become this game. You are never going to be larger than this game. Right. I don't <laughs> care how much knowledge you think you have, it yeah. will always come to humble you. Bonds busted loose with seven homers over his next 19 games and batted close to 300. Coming up, we'll hear from Mark McGuire as Big Mac reflects upon his record-shattering 98 season. Right now, let's return to the Giants and Cardinals on ESPN Classic. 
With St. Louis still leading 1-0, we move ahead to the top of the third inning where the Giants have two outs and third baseman Bill Miller on first after hitting a sharp single to left field. As we pick up the action, Barry Bonds has just stepped to the plate right here on ESPN Classic. Barry Bonds takes a called strike. Two gone here in the third inning. The Cardinals with that one nothing lead. McGuire due to lead off for the birds in the home half of the third. Ten home runs 33 ribbies for Mr. Bonds. And I guess now that Mark McGuire is in the National League certainly Barry one of the most feared hitters but maybe not the most feared hitter. Well, as a as a power hitter, and I, I I think that Mark is in a class by himself as far as power is concerned. I think Barry is more of a uh, he, he uses more the, the all of the ballpark. Uh, Mark just has raw power that did, that speaks for itself. Yeah, even Piazza came out and said, "Hey, wait a minute. This guy is far beyond what I can do." Although I did see Mike Piazza hit one over. Uh, Big Macklin when he was here uh, taking batting practice with the Marlins. He didn't stay with him long, did he? No, it didn't take long. Enough to say hello, how are you? Goodbye. The answer with the Mets. Yeah, I think uh, we're about to to see the dismantling of the uh, Baltimore Orioles here pretty soon uh, if they don't get on track here. You can hear the rumors starting as far as Paul Merrill mm -hmm. and Robbie Alomar and. Olerud. Now, am I right? Rafael Palmer, there was some talk about maybe working a deal with the Mets, a pretty good sized deal. I believe Palmero in his contract has a no trade to New York clause. Was it to New York? To New York, the city of. I tell you what, you know, when you have situations like that, you give a guy an opportunity to, to win and. Uh, you forget about things like that. Ball one to Jeff Kent. Kent his first time up single. He was gunned down trying to score on a good throw from Clayton to Pagnazzi and an expertly blocked home plate. Two away here in the third. Cardinals on top. And Dick Isaac pulls a string way out in front. Kent whacks it into the Giants dugout and sends them scattering. I think he got Mark uh, Gardner there in the chest. Look out, fellas. There's mesh netting around there to keep some of the balls out, but the ball bounces over it. What can you do except <laughs> just dive out of the way? Good pitch from Pekaisic, one and two. You know, in talking about that uh, New York Mets situation over there, well, what do they do when uh, Todd Hundley comes back? Yeah. You know, it's going to present an interesting uh, scenario. And I know that uh, earlier this week, he talked about the fact that uh, it would be a good deal as we watch him hit the ball down in the corner. Rifled into the corner. Jeff Kent pulls in with a double run, scores. Game's tied. Bonds at third. So Jeff Kent delivering with two outs. An ex Met. But I know that uh, Todd Hundley uh, said that with his injury and re, uh, rehabbing and all of that, that this might be a good situation for the team for him to take the year off as we watch uh, Jeff Kent hit the ball down in the corner again. Starting to swing the bat very, very good now. Well, this is a big hitter right now for Pitt Kaisek. He is facing J.T. Snow. Got J.T. to hit a little weak grounder to Mabry. And he swings and misses. The Kaiser gets out of this without further damage. The Cardinals certainly don't want to go into their bullpen early in the game. Of course you never do, but especially with the way the bullpen has been working lately. If they can get six strong out of Mark today and just keep everybody resting, there are some pitchers that won't be available. In this game, little bouncing ball goes foul and maybe touches it then. So Pitkaisic is ahead 0 and 2 to JT Snow. 
Bottenfield worked a third of an inning last night. Lance Painter probably not available after throwing two innings last night. Same for Curtis King. So if and when the Cardinals get into the bullpen, you'll see Acevedo available and Frascatori. And even Jeff Brantley, who I'm sure is anxious to get back out there after the home run he allowed to Miller on Friday night. 0-2 pitch. Got him! And a way to go, Mark. Fastball inside. Called strike three. And that man due to lead off for the Cardinals. Cardinals battling the San Francisco Giants from May of 1998 on ESPN Classic. Welcome back to the ESPN Classic Showcase of Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds. We move ahead in the game now to the top of the fifth inning. Pitcher Sean Estes helped his own cause and sparked the Giants offense when he hit a bloop single to shallow left field and later advanced to second on a sacrifice bunt. A nice leaping catch by third baseman John Mabry robbed the Giants of a base hit and kept Estes at second base. But the next batter, Barry Bonds, lined one to right field, scoring Estes, giving San Fran a 2-1 lead. In the bottom half of the inning, leadoff batter Ron Gant drew a walk and reached second base after a wild pickoff throw ended up in right field. The next batter, Delino DeShield, doubled to the left center gap, scoring Gant. With the game now tied at two, Mark McGuire was intentionally walked, and Estes just missed on a pitch to Ray Lankford for ball four to load the bases. Veteran Willie McGee was able to knock in DeShields with a bouncer to second, putting the cards on top three to two. When we return, we'll move ahead in the action to the top of the eighth inning right here on ESPN Classic. anniversary with a week of Washington's greatest games from Lombardi to Allen to Gibbs Sonny to Billy to Joey to Dougie to Mark recapture the glory all week long hail to the Redskins 70th anniversary all this week at 6 p.m. only on ESPN Classic you're watching Mark McGuire and the St. Louis Cardinals battling the San Francisco Giants from May of 1998 on ESPN Classic you got to tip your cap to what Mark Pitkaisic did. Let's get Pitkaisic's numbers out of the way after Juan Acevedo, who is 1-1, one 5.06 one, ERA. And if you've watched Juan pitch this year, you know he has struggled at times with balls and strikes. He has walked too many hitters, but he has a good live arm. In 90s with his fastball. Pitkaisic, seven innings pitched, two runs, both earned. He allowed 10 hits, walked a couple, and had a strikeout. Excellent game for Mark Pitkaisic. Wow. Did a great job. As he's done most of the year, he's really, really helped uh, Tony out in, in instances where he's needed him. Marvin Bernard to lead it off for the Giants. He is in right field today. This guy is an excellent punter. Bat up the bat handle. And he just cuts the foul into the crowd. John Mabry is in so far at third. He looks like a fast pitch softball game. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Yeah, I wondered what that movie was coming up on our flagship station, WB11. It is Stakeout. Richard Dreyfus, Emilio Estevez. So stick around for the excitement of Stakeout. Ozzy Acevedo's in there throwing strikes, and he's throwing hard. Let's remember that his fastball is, is, is the key for him. Spot that fastball. And with two strikes, threat of a bunt no longer there. Mabry dropped back to even with a bag as Bernard bounces one into the seats in right. Pitch 
pitch to Bernard. Back up the middle to Shields to his right. Little lazy line drive that Delano tracks down for the first out. Delano was on the move to his right. Nice little running catch. One out here in the eighth inning. Lazy pop up. Juan, let somebody else get it, pal. Get out of there. <laughs> There's Acevedo saying, no, mine, mine. Well, let me re cruise through there and make the catch. We don't want Acevedo stumbling on the rubber and breaking a leg or some such thing. Communication, Ozzy, so important in this little game of ours. John Mabry's done a good job of taking control out there at third base. Yeah, you know, he's really having a nice game defensively. Our play of the game on the ground ball to his left. He went up and made a nice stab on a line drive. And I, as I would say to him, ah, that wasn't a tough play. He's so tall, he's right there anyway. I see you can get away with it. I walk <laughs> up to him and say, hey, that wasn't a tough play, and he'd punch me. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. He's, he, he's too nice a guy. 1-1 one, one count. Brian Johnson pops it up. In comes Ron Gant. Way in, makes the catch. Tough play with the sun so high that Acevedo mows the Giants down. Cardinals hitting it in the eighth. 97, Mark McGuire picked up where he left off in 98 with 37 homers by the end of June. He broke Hack Wilson's National League record when he smashed his 57th on September 1st. What had seemed impossible for more than a generation came to pass seven days later as McGuire tied Roger Maris's all-time record with his 61st homer in the 144th game of the season. The next night, off of Steve Traxel, he broke the record with a liner over the left field wall. McGuire sat down with Dan Patrick and discussed his achievement in his vintage conversation from 1998. Are people now telling you don't give away your shoes and don't give away your bats and don't give away gloves or balls? No, I, I do it all the time. Um, I give Jim Leland um, my batting gloves after the last game down in Florida. I gave uh, Bobby Knight, who was here a few weeks ago, I gave him my shoes I hit 50 through 55 in. Um, I gave, like my second father, uh, Jim, gave him my bat that I hit 50 through 55 you know, I, I, it's, you know, those things mean a lot to me, but it means even more than I can give them to them. So you don't feel like, I mean, what are you holding on to? The, the, the bat and the ball goes to Cooperstown. Well, the bat, the ball, my batting gloves, my hat, my helmet, my jersey, my pants I wore that night with my belt in it, my Nike cleats with my orthotics in it. So if people look in there, they go, he really did have bad feet. <laughs> Um, that's why I, I gave him everything except for my undershirt and my tights and my cup. jock. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't ask for that. Although my jock did get, uh, not my jock, my cup did get stolen this year. That's the only thing I've ever had stolen. Somebody took your protective cup? From Houston to St. Louis, last time we were in Houston, my, cu my cup decided to jump out. And <laughs> so if ever somebody comes up and walks and says, hey, can you sign this cup? <laughs> I'm going to take it back. Do you worry, though, that you can't be the public Mark McGuire anymore. You can't walk on a golf course and just play. You can't be out in the front yard with your son. That You've, you've sacrificed or you've lost a little bit of that? Um, I'm going to be the, the same person I'm going to be. I just, you know, people say, well, you know, here he's thrown in all the success, you know. Oh, he's going to change. Well, you know what? No, I'm not going to change. You know what happens is the people around you change because they look at you differently. They think, well, here's this guy. Oh, my God, he hit 62 or or how many until the end of the season home runs oh he's a different person no I'm not a different person I'm the same person I'm gonna be the same dad I just hope people around me people in the city that I live in don't change McGuire hit 23 homers in his final 40 games and five of the last weekend of the season to finish 1998 with 70 three years later Barry Bonds broke Max Mark with 73 later we'll hear from Bonds as he discusses his image now let's return to the Giants and Cardinals on ESPN Classic. Into the eighth inning, nice game for Delano DeShields, Oz. It's two for four with a double, a run scored, and an RBI. Mark McIsaac had 108 pitches, 40 balls, and 68 strikes. And the Cardinal home run streak is on the line here, so we've got to crank it up. 
with maybe just three outs to go. The fans, as they wave to us here all along the Cardinals network, are anxious to see either Willie or Pagnazzi or Mabry hit one out and keep this streak alive. Home runs 15 games in a row. Julian Tavares is the new Giants pitcher. If you watch Friday night's game here along the Cardinals network, you know that this young man has a live arm. He is a very talented pitcher. Came over from Cleveland, and uh, I think he's been in, a, in, a, in a, a large amount of games for the Giants, too. I checked the numbers here. While you do that, we'll tell you a little bit about his fastball. Hi, folks. How are you? That fastball that he has really will ride in on a right-handed hitter. And again, late in the ball game, Tony's hand somewhat tied in terms of moves. So a well-pitched game is exactly what the Cardinals needed today. David Howard is out with an injury. So is Guy Eddy. So is Brian Jordan. So realistically, only Lampkin and Hunter are available to pinch hit. Unless you do what Tony told me he might before the game, use a Busby or a Stottlemyre or a Merker. Dusty Baker and the Giants had been playing great baseball and then they come to St. Louis. They lose an extra inning game on Friday night and a wild 11 to 10 affair here last night. I don't think I've seen that color on a Cardinal shirt ever. Tavares facing Willie McGee who bats left handed for the first time in this game and takes a ball. Birds have a tough task here, Rich. This guy's only been scored on three times in his last 16 outings. All right. He's been good, and there's that fastball outside and tailing away, moving away from the game. One-one pitch. Took something off, and Willie's out in front. Julian Tavares, 24-year-old right-hander from Santiago in the Dominican Republic. Breaking ball missed. He won six games for the Giants last year. Tavares, six and four, good a yard. Eh? And as Ozzie told you, his numbers this year very impressive. In fact, this entire Giants bullpen, Ozzie, has been. It's 22 appearances this year. 22 appearances. Dusty Baker told me when we were out in San Francisco, the bullpen, he thinks, is one of the strengths of this team. He, he doesn't mind getting into them early. McGee, bouncing ball, wide of the bag, foul ball. Now, that's a cool kid. That's a cool customer here with a big swig of water on a hot, sunny Memorial Day Sunday. Ground ball. Through and into right field. Base hit for Willie. Kent not overly mobile to his left on that particular ground ball. And so Willie McGee is on. As we watch the ball just slide right underneath him. Willie just being Willie. That's just Willie, isn't it? Just threw two more out there. Base hit in the first for Willie McGee. Base hit here in the eighth for Willie. Do you feel like you've seen Willie get 3,000 hits? Actually, yes. Yes, I do. Up the middle, off the glove of Tavares. Sanchez throws out Pagnazzi. He, he does a super job right here of composing himself and taking his time. Now, here's a guy that knew who was running. Actually, it's Aurelia. He knew who was running. He took his time and uh, made a good throw over to first base. So Rich Aurelia into the game on a double switch for Dusty Baker's Giants. And yeah, that's a tough play for a guy who's just coming off the bench who hasn't Ozzy been involved in the game situation. And as you said, knowing who's running.
crowd doesn't like this. John Mabry hitting. They'd like to see him get his hacks. They'll walk John intentionally with Royce Clayton hitting behind him. Three two Cardinals lead here in the eighth inning. They are trying for a Memorial Day weekend sweep of the San Francisco Giants. Colorado will be here tomorrow. It's an afternoon game, a 1-10 start, and then a rare Tuesday off for the Cardinals. The Rockies here again on Wednesday and Thursday before the Birds head west for four games in San Diego and three in Los Angeles. I should let you know, too, folks, for all of you on our Cardinals flagship WB11, we're very happy next week to have the Children's Miracle Network Champions Telethon on Saturday night preceding Cardinals baseball. And then all day Sunday, we raise money for St. Louis Children's Hospital and Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital. And it's always a great source of pride and enjoyment for us at WB11 to have the telethon from Six Flags. Foul ball. Cree Craig, Sandy Miller, Mark Faree, Christine Buck. They will be hosting this year's telethon from Six Flags. Bob and I will be in San Diego. I'm sure we'll have some things to do, too. That's a lot of fun, Oz. Yes, you is. were there last year for a good long year. while. Mm -hmm. we'll be there again this year. Cool. You guys will be in San Diego. Miller, second for one. On to first, safe, and now McGee trying to score as the ball bounces away. Heads up, base running. That's the veteran, Willie McGee. does a good job here of anticip anticipating this ball being uh, in the dirt right here and the ball get away good job by Mabry getting down there on the uh, on the second baseman gets a good lead off he's running hard all the way it's anticipating anticipating ball gets away scores easily and what a large run that is as Juan Acevedo hits for himself That little one run cushion to make it a 4 2 game can be huge here on a Sunday afternoon against the Giants team. That will lead off with Rich Aurelia after the double switch. Then the top of their order Hamilton, Miller, and if anyone gets on, Barry Bonds. Guest of Cardinals baseball receive a gift certificate from Famous Bar, a tradition of fashion leadership. No balls, two strikes to Acevedo, who corks one into right field. Bernard, a running catch. And the Cardinals through here in the eighth inning, but that run on a heads-up base running play by that man is a big one. Plastic holds the promise of a better world, taking medicine to new heights and giving our lives greater comfort. It's in the packaging that protects us and a pacemaker to empower us every day touching every generation. From the ambulance to the emergency room, it puts the answers in our hands and hope in our hearts. For a safer, more brilliant tomorrow, plastics make it possible. A day of Puerto Rico's biggest sports legends in some of their greatest games. Only on ESPN Classic. Follow Puerto Rico's own Roberto Clemente as he leads the Pirates to victory in the 71 World Series. Catch the Blue Jays and the Rangers classic season opener from San Juan's Huron Beethorn Stadium in 2001. Plus, a special profile of legendary Latin baseball player Orlando Cepeda. And much more. Classic Puerto Rico starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Sunday, November 3rd, only on ESPN Classic. You're watching Mark McGuire and the St. Louis Cardinals battling the San Francisco Giants from May of 1998 on ESPN Classic. Up the runway. Those are the lovely seats 
here in Bush Stadium. As you can see, that's a nice play. Here's the play, Ozzy. As we take a look, Giants trying to turn two, and Willie scored on a bad throw. We have a, a situation where maybe goes down hard on him here and makes him shorten his throw a little bit there. And the ball kind of kicks away there. And Willie being the heads up base runner that he is, scored easily. Yeah, Clayton had the throw beat. It, it was probably an ill advised throw by Jeff Kent. The ball hit slowly, and then you gun one into the dirt, and I don't care how good you are, and JT's one of the best. That was a tough pick. That was a, a very tough play, and the only thing that you can hope for there is you keep the ball in front of you, which would uh, keep the runner at third base, but uh, as you saw, the ball kicked away far enough for Willie to score. T-shirt day at the ballpark, and they're using them as bonnets. I thought that was an Easter thing. This is Memorial Day, kids. They're keeping the sun off the old noggin here as Juan Acevedo tries to do the Giants in. In the ninth inning, the Cardinals trying to sweep and send Sandy or San Francisco packing with their daubers down. One and one. Rich Aurelia, the hitter. He came into the ball game in the eighth inning on a double switch. Acevedo buzzed him and sends him back, and Aurelia looks menacingly at him. That's an ouch. <laughs> That's an ouch look. How did Pagnazzi catch that ball? Did you see that? Pagnazzi, I think, had his eyes closed and turned <laughs> his head. He thought the ball was going to hit him. Really a hitting 319 Acevedo being somewhat careful to him although there he got the high strike in there and now the bases are or pardon me the count is full throw a strike here he did fouled away Juan Acevedo Sunday afternoon might be his finest hour. We remember Acevedo coming in on a situation that was uh, dicey at best a few Sundays ago here at Bush Stadium. And getting the job done. He'll try to do that again today. That pitch is close. Aurelia knew he had ball four all the way. He slings his bat and hustles down to first. So Acevedo walks the leadoff guy. Tying run now to the plate. And barring a double play, that means Barry Bonds will hit in this inning. A similar situation to what we had here on Friday night. An insurance run late, but the possibility of a two run homer tying the game. Get a chance to see the fastball from the camera behind home plate there. It's to Daryl Hamilton. Get it out, gang. The Shields missed the tag. Throws. Got his man. That was a good play by Delano De Shields. I saw a lot of white Ozzy in oh, that oh glove as he tried to swipe a, the runner going by. It's a good chance that. Uh, on a play like this, you could sling that ball out because there was a lot of white there. But he does a good job of gathering himself and getting it out there at first base. Hey, the runner at second is meaningless. It's nice to get two if you can get it. But Delano took care of business, and he got Daryl Hamilton. And guess who? Yeah. Friday night, he went up there against Brantley looking fastball, and Bill Miller pounded one out in right field to tie the game. This one hacked in the left, slicing away. Trouble for Gant, who slides and made the catch. No, he, you know, he flipped it to Did Clayton. Clayton catch that off the hand of Ron right. Gant? He flipped it in the air. It's a trick play. Assist, Gant. 
Gant still doesn't know what happened. He doesn't happened. know what happened. <laughs> the guy with the chair getting out of the way. Off his wrist. Oh, it bounced. That it hit the bounced. ground. It hit the ground. Well, Clayton sold it. And now the Giants dugout, perhaps watching on a video monitor, They're hollering out there, hey, wait a minute, that ball hit the ground. It did hit the ground. If the Cardinals get this one, they're getting the gifts. Nice selling job by Royce Clayton. Yeah, they sold that. They sold it and they stole it. Well, I'm not writing it in the book just yet. There's no question this ball was missed by Ron Gant. It's a tough play, a long run, Ozzy, from left field. Hit him up the wrist. Right. But that's what you do as a shortstop, right? right. If it bounces in that play. Arm. That's right. And show it. Well, the dangerous Barry Bonds takes a strike from Acevedo. Bill Miller is going to see the video replay of that later on and throw up. <laughs> One out away from a sweep, 0-2 oh to Bonds. That'll get the Cardinals fans on their feet. enough. Oh, he's a talented hitter. That was a mean pitch from Acevedo just to stay alive. Down. Stay alive, yes. Back with a cheer. Acevedo, 0-2 to Barry Bonds in the ninth inning. Continues to throw that gas, Ozzy. This is one man that you don't want to make a mistake to with heat over the middle of the plate. Well, you better be able to spot that fastball because when guys like this, when, when they know that all you're going to throw them is a fastball, it's just a matter of time. What you worry about is, is hitters like this here when they foul a fastball straight back. If he fouls it off to the left like Barry did before, then he get the ball away from him. Mm -hmm. But when they start fouling it directly back behind the screen is when, when I get worried. They're right on it, though. They're right on it. Aurelia at second and meaningless unless Bonds can. Jack one out of here. Now it's two and two as Acevedo missed inside. Well, you don't want to walk Bonds and put the winning run on. You also don't want to give in to him because he can smoke you. Fly ball, right field, well hit, drifting back. Willie, Homer, gone! Home run, Barry Bonds. And we're tied for the second time in three games. A two-run homer in the ninth ties this game. Wow. He gave in, and Bonds made him pay, Ozzy. Well, you know, we talked about it, and uh, 
the first foul ball that he hit off the other side was spotted very well, and the fastball that he missed on was spotted very well. But with guys like this here, you can't miss out over the plate because what happens is what we just saw happen. And the fastball that he fouled straight back told me that he was right on it. And if you, with hitters like that, if they know a fastball is coming, you can shoot it out of a cannon. You can't get it by them. Two-run homer by Barry Bonds here in the ninth inning, and the Giants back in business in a 4-4 game. Mm. I was watching Willie. The way he was drifting, I thought for a moment he was going to have a play with his back against the wall. But it carried and carried. When you have guys like, like Barry, for instance, and a pitcher that throws this hard. That guy is the one that's supplying the power. Now, from a mechanic standpoint, if he executes the way that he's capable of staying in the strike zone and just getting the good part of the bat on the ball, that he, half of it's half of it's licked. Lazy fly ball. Ray Lankford in the center field to end the inning, but Barry Bonds does it again for the Giants. His 11th home run ties this one. Bottom of the ninth, we go. Gotta tell you, I've had some great deals come my way, but a big and tasty. But just a dollar? You did your thing, dog. Not that I'm calling you a dog. I mean, you're more like a big purple. I don't know what you are. <laughs> what you say about my mama? <laughs> Get a delicious big and tasty or a McChicken sandwich for just a dollar every day at McDonald's. You got a buck? You're in luck. Grimace. Bump with me. Well, what Sports Center's best spot ever? You decide. Vote at ESPN.com now and choose your favorite. You might even land a walk-on role in an upcoming Sports Center promo. And you could win a T-Mobile sidekick just for voting. Sports Center, only on ESPN. When a washed-up drunk and a bunch of delinquents hit the field, it's bad news. Real classics, movies, and real stories from the actors who made them classics. The Bad News Bears, 9 Eastern Sunday on ESPN Classic. Was it July 4th, 1939, or September 6th, 1995? Was it this defining blast, or his dance of joy? Did you decide on perfection? Did you pick 61 or 62? Was it his catch, his first game, or April 8th, 1974? What is the most memorable moment? Watch game four of the World Series. I've always loved working on computers, and in the Army, that's what I do. If you never thought about the U.S. Army or Army Reserve, think about this. There are 212 ways for you to become a soldier and work at a job you'll love. Call for this free video to find out which job is right for you. And if you call 1-800-645-ARMY right now, you'll also receive a free Army t-shirt with your video. Discover the 212 ways you can be an Army of One. Attention inventors, call for your free inventors kit, 877-800-0843, or visit us on the web at inventorshelpline.com. You'll receive free confidential forms and useful information describing the invention process. And when you call right now, you'll also receive a free brochure which tells you how to begin to develop your new idea. So get the ball rolling. Pick up your phone right now and call for your free inventors kit. Call today toll free for your free inventors kit, 877-800-0843, or visit our website at inventorshelpline.com. You're watching Mark McGuire and the St. Louis Cardinals battling the San Francisco Giants from May of 1998 on ESPN Classic. Welcome back to Bush Stadium for the top of the 12th inning with the score still tied at four. The Giants will lead things off with Bill Miller at the plate with no balls in one strike right here on ESPN Classic. Home run off Jeff Brantley here on Friday night turned a two hour and 15 minute game into a three hour and 30 minute game. So family and friends here from St. Louis and DeSmet happy to see that but I know a lot of Cardinals fans at the time wanted that victory. They got it eventually. The Cardinals also winning last night. Two and one. 
to Bill Miller. I know Ozzy you love to have those power guys at the corner and really it doesn't fit Bill Miller's stroke but he is a nice gap hitter and what I like most about him is his ability to hit the ball to all fields. He sprays the ball all around the ballpark and plays a good third base down there. He's not a prototypical third baseman but oh as he doubles it down in the corner that here. Ball's fair into the corner so Miller just cuts one into left field. And the Giants with something going here in the 12th inning. A leadoff double by Miller. Barry Bonds to hit next. Here's the example of hitting to all fields, Ozzy. See inside outs the ball right here, just inside the line there. In the ninth inning, and the reason we're still around, Juan Acevedo went one too many fastballs to Mr. Bonds. He got that ball up and it carried and it carried and I thought Willie might get it. He backed to the track over the boards home run bonds with 11 home runs now on the season. Judy Bauer earlier in the game. As that ball rides up and in on Barry, and he just gets the bat around and fouls it left. Judy Bauer of Christian Family Day, which is coming up at Bush Stadium on July 11th. The Cardinals against Houston. Daryl Porter will be here. There's that shadow, Ozzy. Oh, yeah. Actually, you have the flags waving out there in front of the home plate there now. So, yeah, how distracting is that for a hitter? It really tests your concentration, that's for sure. I don't know that Frascatore wants to make this guy angry. And pitch inside, diving out of the way. Oh, well, that, that's actually a pretty good pitch right there to try and sit up this next pitch. They'll go away from Bonds. Got him swinging. Bonds whacks himself in the helmet in frustration. And the pitch before is the one that set it up. Backed him off the plate. Went hard with a tailing fastball away. Frascatore with a nice job of pitching. In a situation like that, a guy doesn't mind being brushed back there. The ball's down uh, in the strike zone. It didn't hit him. It wasn't near his head or anything. And that's just good pitching right there. And we had a situation earlier in the week with Armando Benitez of the Yankees in that hotly contested series with Baltimore where he hit Tino Martinez square in the back after a home run and that was one of the ugliest fights in baseball I've ever seen. Well, you know that goes way back. I think that uh, a similar situation like that happened when uh, Tino was with uh, Seattle uh -oh. as we watched Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent line drive home run. Man oh man he belted it off. John Frascatoria now the Giants lead this game 6 4. Mm. We've watched this guy all day. He's uh, he's been swinging the bat. He's really starting to come on now. He got off to a slow start this year but he's swinging the bat extremely well today and he connects right there. He hits that ball off of his backside, and I think he knows when he hit it that that ball, if it stays fair, has a chance of getting out of here, which it does. Fifth home run of the year for Jeff Kent. That is his third RBI in this game. He has 35, and the Giants lead 6 4. Ground ball, snow right at Royce. For the second out. Home runs killing the Cardinals. Bonds in the ninth inning. Kent here in the twelfth. As Rob Nin will bat for himself. How often does this happen? 
Not very often. I think he's uh, he's having to stretch him a little bit today because of his bullpen problems. And normally you don't want your your closer in there for three innings, but he's forced to do it today with Rob Nin. Rob Nin has hit twice this year. He is 0 for 2, just two at bats on the season on May 24th for the Giants closer who today stands to be the winner if he can get past the Cardinals in the bottom half of the 12th. Two outs but serious damage done by Jeff Kent. Dusty Baker might crawl out of here with a win yet. Ball. Delano to his right stayed down on him. He made a good play. And he gets the pitcher. But Jeff Kent is poised to be the Giants hero today. Dusty Baker watching as Kent crosses on a two-run homer. Games, trivia, upcoming specials, and the ESPN Classic program schedule, go to ESPN.com. Keyword, classic. The staff at the site's page two pondered, who are the most beloved Major League players of all time? They came up with two cubs, two cards, a bird of a different feather, and the babe. No list of beloved ball players would be complete without Babe Ruth. He tops the list. Iron Man Cal Ripken takes the second spot. While Big Mac was fourth, trailed by the man that chased him in 1998, Sammy Sosa. Here are the results of the poll that determined the least likable players, and the list is topped by the man who despised the babe, Ty Cobb. Georgia Peach was followed by Rocker and the Rocket. Barry Bonds rounds out our list at number six. When Bonds broke Mark McGuire's record in 2001, he was named National League MVP for the fourth time. Bonds had more home runs and runs batted in than any player in the 1990s and won eight gold gloves during the decade, but still remained an unpopular figure with fans and media. Bonds talked to Carl Ravitch about his image in his vintage conversation in 1998. Do you really care about what people think of you? Everybody cares what people think about them. Do I have control over what the people think about me? No, because I don't write the newspapers. I don't sit on ESPN and conversate. I don't make my own evaluation of another human being that I spend absolutely zero time with. But I've never done anything. I've done any, nothing but played the game of baseball and played my own style. I've said some bad things toward people that have said some bad things toward me, but so have you, so has the next person. But I don't have any love loss for that person. It's not something to keep continually persecuting me for. During McGuire's record-breaking season of 1998, Bonds batted 303 with 37 homers, 122 runs batted in, and 28 stolen bases. Now let's return to the Cardinals and Giants from 1998 here on ESPN Classic. Jeff Kent, power-hitting second baseman, and he touched them all against John Frascatore to give the Giants the lead, Ozzie. He's got a fastball on the inner half of the plate right there and boy he was all over that fastball just backsided it out uh, over the wall there in left field Ken's fifth home run and now Rob Nan who really doesn't need any help when you throw 97 miles an hour that's intimidating enough has the advantage of the shadows crawling past home plate Dusty Baker, Ron Peronoski for the Giants. Counting on their closer. There you see the awkward hitting situation for these Cardinals hitters. And the first to try it out, Tom Lampkin. You're in a situation now, really, the only a couple of reserves. He's used one, Brian Hunter. And down two runs in the 12th inning. You might as well use Lampkin and try to get him on. That's all you can do here now, and hopefully you get get somebody on here and give your power-hitting leadoff man a chance to try and tie this ball game up. We've seen pitchers hit today, guys that ordinarily would not swing. Juan Acevedo, Danny Darwin, and Rob Nen all getting hacks in this game as Nen throws a ball. Look at the rosin come off that baseball. Nine. That's called throwing smoke. JT foul ground. 
one away. It'll be Ron Gant, then Delano to Shields. If anybody gets aboard, remember the possibility of a two-run home run tying this game would then fall into the lap of the Major League leading home run hitter. First, you got to get a guy on. So that's Ron Gant's job here in the 12th inning with the Cardinals trailing by two. Outfield is deep straight away. Middle infielder is pretty deep. This guy's still throwing hard, too. Oh, this is his third inning of work. And boy, he rushed that one up there at about 95. 95 with shadows. 95 with shadows. Gant weakly to right field. Second out. Javier makes the catch. And the Cardinals are down to their final out. The Giants were down to their final out in the ninth inning. Barry Bonds made Dusty Baker a happy manager by hitting a two-run home run. We played on to 12. And now the Cardinals have Delano DeShields in there with you-know-who on deck. Ball one pitch to Delano DeShields. Blew it by him, 97 miles an hour. That's strong, Ozzy. Oh, boy. That's strong, man. This crowd got one of the bigger cheers of the day in the 10th inning when Delano DeShields walked to load the bases. Mark McGuire, who has delivered so often for the birds this year, couldn't get it done in the tent. He struck out against Rob Nett. Would he like another crack at this play? Yeah. And he'll get it. Base hit to Shields. Up comes McGuire. Those who have stayed, and there are a good many of them, we started the day with 45,854, are getting what I said in the 10th was exactly what they wanted to see. McGuire in a game situation where a home run in this case ties it for him. Talk it over. Talk it over out there. You know, situation here, you don't want to hold a runner on because that run means nothing. If he wants to take second base right now, then you allow him to do it, and that way you can definitely walk Mark McGuire. You, you got your hands full with Ray Langford, but they've been able to handle Ray pretty much today. So you, if he wants to steal second base right here, you allow him to do it. But an interesting situation. If Mark McGuire doesn't get a hit, a pitch to hit, as he checks his swing for a call strike one. If the Shields wanted to just run to second base, leave first base open, that would bring the winning run to the plate. Pitch outside to McGuire. The Shields will stay put 1 1 men against McGuire in a great power matchup. Off to the right side. And the Cardinals now are down to their final strike. In this situation against Nen last time up in the 10th inning, Rob threw McGuire a nasty slider on the outside part and got it. What do you think he's going to throw him here? I think he's going to throw him a nasty slider on the outside bar. <laughs> Whether he gets him or not remains to be seen. Just 
dismissed. About a foot outside, wanted to see if McGuire would chase a bad ball. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The Giants have a two-run lead. And the Cardinals down to their final strike. Watch Barry Bonds' reaction. He never moved. Unbelievable. He hung a, a slider that didn't slide. Cardinals home run streak is alive they have hit a home run in their last 16 games took extra innings to do it we might play beyond the 12th down to their final strike tit for tat on a home run by Mark McGuire Bonds and McGuire two of the greatest stars in the game oops Well, Rob, it happens to a lot of you. Well, you know, in situations like this here, you know, you, you often hear guys talk about not losing on your second or third best pitch. His pitch is a fastball. And he ends up tying the ball game on a slider that hung. To the 13th we go. Well, that would explain the stomach pains. How long have I got, Doc? Not long. Long enough to go get a delicious Mike's Hard Cranberry Lemonade? Mike's makes a hard cranberry lemonade? You bet. That does sound tasty. A hard day calls for a hard cranberry lemonade. <laughs> Make it Mike's. I think do-it-yourself is very much an attitude. It's just such an American tradition. If you want to figure out if you can do something with your own two hands, whether it's a repair or a rebuild, there's a lot of uh, folks that will do this because they get enjoyment out of it. The sense of satisfaction uh, at the end of having done it at home, done it ourselves, that's something that's wonderful and it's very American. The biggest challenge for any do-it-yourselfer is having the right tools. The Craftsman Tool Department is really the place to go for the value and warranty. 1,800 Craftsman hand tools, all made in America, guaranteed forever. Find what you need in this free catalog. I always think that good tools are the key to a job well done. Remember. 
Ted Williams is the John Wayne of sports. How perfect we can be. Nicholas hit a tee shot that only gravity kept on this planet. Discover. It wasn't that Cal Ripken didn't get hurt. He was hurt all the time. How human we really are. There were times where I didn't think I was going to be able to walk again. These are their stories. I'm here to win. I believe I'm the best ambassador baseball has. This is my house. This is the award-winning Sports Century. 8 p.m. weeknights on ESPN Classic. These MLB Authentic Collection team jackets will head to the playoffs to grace the shoulders of their favorite players and share in the glory that is October. The others will grace the shoulders of Roy's and Bob's and Steve's and share in the glory that is a hot dog and a cold one. Get your MLB Authentic Collection team jacket from the Major League Baseball Clubhouse store for just $119. Call 1-866-MLB-GAME. Call now. 1-866-MLB-GAM. Today we're learning how Dell helps people order America's favorite PC. We're supposed to write a report on what we learned. So you're a big video game player. It sounds like you're really into music. That's cool. Oh, so you're on the road a lot. You have two kids in college. <laughs> I was hoping that we could get her on. Hey, how's it going, guys? Mr. Richards, we don't want to get anyone in trouble, but everyone just seems to be chit-chatting. Right, but they're not just talking, they're listening. You can't make someone's perfect PC if you don't find out how they're going to use it first. That's exactly what I told her, sir. Call or go online now and get a Dimension desktop for just $5.99 after a $50 instant savings. Featuring an Intel Pentium 4 processor for awesome performance for today's digital entertainment. Recording music, sharing photos, gaming, and beyond. Right now, you'll get a free CD burner or DVD upgrade. Get great deals on notebooks, too. Dude, you're getting a Dell. I don't want to get anyone in trouble, but... Your perfect PC? It's easy as Dell. Dell PCs use Intel Pentium 4 processors. You're watching Mark McGuire and the St. Louis Cardinals battling the San Francisco Giants from May of 1998 on ESPN Classic. As Kent Merker takes over here in the 17th. All right, Merck, what you got for us? He'll start on Thursday, and he starts the hitter off with a strike. 0 and 1, 17th inning, San Francisco 6, the Cardinals 6. This is the longest game that we've had at Bush Stadium since April of 1992. The game against the Montreal. You remember that one? I remember that. Remember that game against the Expos? Another extra inning. <laughs> Find the energy. Yeah, Feel thanks. your Ginsana, the original natural energizer. That might be what wins the game for the Cardinals. Ginsana. Load them up. If anybody has any Ginsana, send it my way. On my 17th anniversary, Ozzy, I've gone past Here it the is. divorce court and into forgiveness now with this game. 17 years, 17th inning. Oh, and that's Something has to happen here. And will. Like he took something off and missed high and wide. So Merker runs the count to three and two. Kent Merker never thought he'd be in the game today, but we're in the 17th inning. Walked it. He had JT turned around right handed the first time we've seen Snow hit right handed today. And so he is aboard. Charlie Hayes is the Giants hitter. How's your scorecard coming there, Rich? It's a mess. <laughs> it's an absolute mess. And if those of you are scoring at home with us, my guess is you've given up. Unless you've got a lot of white on. Now, here, here's where Carpenter excels. You're talking about the most professional score in Major League Baseball, Bob Carpenter. He has white out. He has two-sided tape. He has it all. For some, his scorecard is a thing of beauty it's to the so point good. get this to the point where Al Broughton wants to do an actual story on Bob Carpenter one of these days we're going to do a feature on the Carpenter scorebook this is his scorebook that we use here oh boy a story wow is that his scorebook yeah it's the Carpenter scorebook I mean it's mine I think Carpenter only charged me about 75 for it no he gave it to me oh okay I was gonna say he's a cheapskate <laughs> He's not with us tonight, folks, as you've That's surmised why we can over. Talk. That's why we can That's talk why we about can talk behind his back. <laughs> as you've surmised over these many hours, 
Bob is with family and friends. They are celebrating an important graduation in the Carpenter household. We wish him well, and we can't wait to see him next week in San Diego. He'll be here at the affiliates breakfast on Thursday. Merker 3 and 0 on Charlie Hayes. So Kent Merker has come in and thrown a lot of balls. He walked the leadoff hitter. Now Hayes goes to 3 and 0. JT Snow is on for the Giants and Merker struggling out there. as if it was too far inside and now laps it off. You'd probably say it, Ed Montague, come on, man. We get the runner in scoring position. Our chances of going home are a little earlier. Don't you guys have a plane to catch? I bet if it's close again, <laughs> he'll get rung up again. I bet he will. Center field, line drive in front of Langford, base hit. Giants with something going here in the 17th inning. They have the first two men on. Charlie Hayes delivers for San Francisco. Good veteran hitter, as we told you his last time up. He has been around a while, been getting hits a good long while. Take us through this swing of his, Ozzy. Well, actually, he took a little off of it and got him out front just a little bit, but he got enough on it to get it over the infield. We hope Merker will bear down and give us a happy scenario as we leave you on this Sunday. When we leave you on this Sunday, he's throwing to Stan Javier, who squared around to bunt. The Cardinals were one strike away from winning this game in the ninth inning when Barry Bonds hit a two-run home run. They got a home run in the 12th from Jeff Kent. The Giants were a strike away from winning. That's a beauty. That's a good punt right there. Merker. Everybody say oh, and throws throw it, away. it away. An ill-advised throw by Merker. Into right field it goes. Two runs will score, maybe. Willie McGee throws through. Pagnazzi can't hold on to it. And the Giants now lead 8-6. to six. Two mistakes by the pitcher on that one. A, not feeling it cleanly. B, a mental error to throw that ball in the first place. All Javier wanted to do was make out here and advance the runners. Instead, he's at second base with nobody out. Tried to rush his throw right there. and when, Once you drop the ball, then he throws that low sinker to Delano De Shields, who has to go ahead and get over from second base to cover it. So kind of a bad play there. And now Brian Johnson, the bunt. Mabry fields, throws, got him. But the runner advances. Dusty Baker taking nothing for granted. If they can take another run in this 17-inning game, they will. The Giants now lead 8-6. to six. We were going through the home runs in this one. There's Dusty. Jeff Kent homered in the 12th inning to put the Giants up by two. And then Mark McGuire with his 24th home run, his third in two days, his fourth in three days. Hit one out in the 12th inning with Delino De Shields, and as Ozzie mentioned, that's a key at bat by Delino in the 12th to get on base in front of Mac. Crowd a little quieter now. Rich Aurelia steps in to hit, and it's 1 0 to him. Base hit. Another run in. The Giants lead 9 6. And the folks booing the Cardinals a little bit, although they were cheering the first two games of this series when the Cardinals won on. Friday night in dramatic fashion. Ron Gantz base hit. 
last night in wild fashion, including two home runs by Mark McGuire. Hamilton singled the lead off the 16th inning and he was erased on a great play at second by Royce Clayton. Bottenfield threw behind Clayton and low. He had to dig it out. Kent Merker now on in the 17th inning. And he stands to be the loser in this one. The Giants leading 9 to 6. Detroit beat Chicago afternoon baseball in the American League eight to four. The Yankees winning again that series with Boston was supposed to be stellar but the Yankees just overpowered them, 14 to four today in Beantown Kansas City eight three winner over Texas. And Minnesota beat Anaheim Toronto beat Cleveland today. Bouncing ball Delano to second for one over to first double play. So Merker throws the ground ball double play, but the damage done here in the 17th. This ESPN Classic program is presented by the American Plastics Council. Professional baseball players rely on cushioned, shock-absorbing plastic used in batter's helmets to help protect them from injury. So play like the professionals and always wear your batting helmet when you step up to the plate. Plastic holds the promise of a better world, taking medicine to new heights, and giving our lives greater comfort. It's in the packaging that protects us and a pacemaker to empower us, every day touching every generation. From the ambulance to the emergency room, it puts the answers in our hands and hope in our hearts. For a safer, more brilliant tomorrow, plastics make it possible. Turbo, a turbo with all-wheel drive. When you get it, you get it. The rally-inspired 227 horsepower Subaru WRX. Looking for Harry Potter magic? Coca-Cola's got it. With collectible Quidditch game cards in every specially marked multi-pack, featuring your favorite characters from the film. Find the golden snitch, and you could get movie cash. You might even win a trip to London to improve your Quidditch skills. Live the magic of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. You don't have to accept thinning hair or baldness any longer. There is a solution, a natural and proven solution that will restore your own hair permanently. Call 1-888-783-HAIR right now and we'll send you your medical hair restoration information kit. You'll receive this award-winning video or DVD free. You don't have to accept your hair loss. Do something on the outside that will make you feel great on the inside. Pick up the phone and call the number on your screen right now. A day of Puerto Rico's biggest sports legends in some of their greatest games. Only on ESPN Classic. Follow Puerto Rico's own Roberto Clemente as he leads the Pirates to victory in the 71 World Series. Catch the Blue Jays and the Rangers classic season opener from San Juan's Hiram Beethorn Stadium in 2001. Plus, a special profile of legendary Latin baseball player Orlando Cepeda. And much more. Classic Puerto Rico starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Sunday, November 3rd, only on ESPN Classic. You're watching Mark McGuire and the St. Louis Cardinals battling the San Francisco Giants from May of 1998 on ESPN Classic. 
We will need some dramatics here in the 17th inning if the Cardinals want to extend this game a little bit further. It's nine to six Giants after a three run top of the 17th and the new pitcher now Steve Reed. This guy's good. We saw him in San Francisco. He had a nice series against the Cardinals. Reed is 2 0, 1.57 ERA. He has allowed just five runs in 24 outings this year. He is normally the setup guy to Rob Nen. He pitched two innings here last night, walked two, but didn't allow a run, so he was masterful against the Cardinals. And an 11 to 10 Cardinals win. He faces the most intimidating hitter in all of baseball, maybe in baseball history. Ozzie talked about it Friday night. He said the eyes, the eyes, the concentration. No blinking. Sidearm to McGuire swings and fouls it straight back. 0 and 1. Mack has a homer today. The Cardinals club record has been extended. It is now 16 games in a row. And for McGuire that's home run number 24. Can you believe that? 60 RBIs. 24 home runs and we have a week of May left. Unbelievable. My goodness. There are the eyes. McGuire 0-2. Got him swinging. Guys that drop down like this are very tough on right handers. That sent a few of the folks heading for the turnstiles as Langford steps in against Reed. Cardinals two out two outs away in this game from going down. They won game one here Friday night. They won here last night. They were going for a sweep of the San Francisco Giants. If they're to get it, they better shake it up. Colorado in here tomorrow, actually already here. The Rockies plane has landed. They're in the hotel. Or out to dinner. Or visiting friends. They're sleeping. Or sleeping. Two strikes on Langford. Langford and Willie McGee. Ray singled in the 14th inning. That's his only hit of the day. He has struck out four times today. He was 0 for 5 prior to that single. One out of six in the game, four out of 14 in the series. One away, and Reed now goes to three and two on length. Breaking ball. Tough day for Ray. He watched that breaking ball in under his fist and couldn't pull the trigger. So the Cardinals now down to their final out, and it's Willie McGee. go up there hacking he's trying to keep this game alive probably took that right off his shoe top ouch line drive left field base hits it was cutting in towards Barry Bonds so McGee is aboard and the Cardinals need another base runner if they can hope to tie things. Tom Pagnazzi will step in. 
Pags has doubled in this game, but that's all. He's one out of seven. If the Giants hold on, Jim Poole will be your winner. Reed would get a save. Merker would lose the game for the Cardinals. Strike one, one and one, two outs here in the 17th inning. Longest game since a 1982 game or 1992 game against the Expos. We have seen plenty in this one. We've had our share of excitements and miscues. Mental mistakes can sometimes kill you and they did to Kent Merker at the top half of the inning an error on a sacrifice bunt where you really just want to get it out as Pagnazzi flies it to Jeff Kent and this marathon game is over 9 19 and 2 for the Giants 6 13 and 1 for the Cardinals Reed saves it for Jim Poole 6 14 and 1 for the Cardinals well, Ozzie, it was a long game, and mistakes wind up killing the Cardinals. The Aaron throw by Kent Merker, the big play late in this game. Yeah, it, uh, it's one of those situations where it kind of he kind of compounded the problem by trying to make a a play after he had made a mistake, and uh, it ended up costing the game. Our next TV game Friday in San Diego. Bob Carpenter will be with us. I'll be out there. Should be fun. Barry Bonds. The big two-run homer to keep this one alive. And because he kept it alive, the Giants go on to win it 9-6. For Ozzie, I'm Rich. So long from Bush Stadium.